Westland's Rory Bialystowski made history as the youngest ever mayor in one of Oregon's most affluent cities and one of the youngest elected officials in the state. At age 23, he already brought political experience to the table. He won election to West Lynn City Council when he was just 21. Now he leaves the Clackamas County city of 27,000 people as West Lynn deals with issues from police reform to wrestling with the state over plans to toll parts of I-205. Interim Mayor Rory Bialystowski, welcome to Ion Northwest Politics. Thank you for having me. Hi, Ken. Hi. Uh, why interested in politics at such a young age? Well, I s started off in high school getting involved in some local issues at the city council and saw some things that I kind of disagreed with and just there was some general dysfunction. So after watching it in high school for a couple of years, going through college, I decided, you know what? I kind of want to get involved just to try to help the city. And so back in 2020, I uh, ran for city council. was fortunate enough to get elected and kind of just continued on. And I'd never expected to be mayor. But when former mayor resigned to take her seat in the legislature, I volunteered to step up. So you have an interim title right now. Will you run to uh, have the position permanently uh, when that comes up in May? I'm still kind of thinking about it and getting my feet under me, but I expect to make a decision on that in the next few weeks and uh, we'll look forward to continuing to serve. West Lynn has some big issues to deal with. Let's start with police reform. Uh, three years ago, as background, uh, West Lynn paid out a $600,000 settlement to a black man named Michael Fesser who was wrongly arrested. Now the city is accepting applications for a new police review committee. What do you hope this committee accomplishes? I'm hoping that our new police oversight board brings more public trust, helps restore the public trust that was lost as a result of that horrible incident. Uh, and I'm just hoping that it helps us have more equitable outcomes uh, when it comes to uh, police investigations. Uh, there's generally been in policing overall, kind of uh, the internal affairs investigation process has been kind of secretive. Uh, and I think there's not a lot of public trust in it. It's failed in Westland in the past. Uh, so I'm hoping that bringing some citizens into the process will help ensure that there's more public trust and just uh, more fair outcomes and, and a, a guarantee that folks will have fairness when they have a misconduct complaint. And also for police officers, if they have a, mis a whistleblowing complaint or, a, or an issue with, that they see with another officer, they'll know that that will be heard by this board uh, and we'll be able to, you know, it, nothing will be swept under the rug. You know, just bringing more light and transparency into that process is, is the goal. How did the, the how did the Fesser case change things within the Westland Police Department from your perspective? Well, I think it definitely exposed that there were some uh, folks there who were not good police officers, and so those folks have been kind of that they were let go and now we're kind of going forward with an eye on reform and just trying to take steps to ensure that uh, those sorts of things don't happen anymore uh, so that definitely changed you know we had a police chief change uh, new leadership at the police department and n none of the officers that were involved in, the, in that uh, horrible incident are there anymore so the future is, is bright for the police department, I think. All right, let's change subjects here. West Lynn asking the legislature for $6 million to help replace the water line that runs underneath the Abernathy Bridge connecting West Lynn to Oregon City. What's the issue here and why go to the legislature for that money? Yeah, so back in the 60s, the city's water line was put on the Abernathy Bridge and uh, it has, generally those pipes last 100 years or so. So our pipe has many years of life left, decades. And as part of the 205 project, we had to, we were told by ODOT that we have to pay to have it replaced. And that cost was initially $6 million. Now it's ballooned to $14 million. And the city's water fund only has a couple million in it per year. And that's meant to cover all of our water maintenance. Uh, so we don't have any money to pay for this pipe. So we took out a loan and we're hoping that the legislature will help us because basically we've had to cancel all of our water maintenance projects, almost all. So there's one or two going forward this year, but one crazy stat that I'll share is usually we do uh, 
about a mile of water line replacements for maintenance. This year, we're only doing 500 feet uh, because of this large obligation. So we're hoping the legislature can help us by uh, reducing the cost so that we can go back out to our community and voters and say, the state's buying in uh, and the state's helping us out. Because this isn't, as a result of the ODOT project, we weren't ready to replace our water line uh, for another couple decades. So we have, didn't plan on it, but we're trying to respond and adapt, I would say. Yeah, uh, we talked about the I-205 project. Uh, ODOT is also looking at adding tolls to I-205 near the uh, Abernathy Bridge. What are Westland's concerns about that? Well, my concern right now is uh, the diversion traffic that'll affect our local streets when people get off the freeway to uh, go on to local streets to avoid the tolls. Uh, and we're concerned that our business district will be kind of overrun by that kind of traffic. We already have diversion now. And the big issue is that there's not really a plan to help cities with mitigation. So the, the re most recent numbers I saw were that the I-205 project is going to cost around 900 million. And tolls are only expected to bring in 500 to 700 million. Uh, so there's over 30 years, by the way. So there's a shortfall. ODOT saying we're going to pay for the project. We're also going to help you with paying for mitigation projects to help traffic move through and things like that. So there's just not enough money. The, the financial picture is not panning out. So we're calling on this ODOT and the state to kind of create a plan to ensure that cities like Westland, Oregon City, the county will have funds available to, um, to, to mitigate the impacts and respond to the impacts of tolling. Uh, and also, the only other thing I'd add is right now tolls are slated to begin on 205 first in Westland and nowhere else in the region for a year or two at least. So we're, we're calling on folks to uh, shorten the gap and if, if, if they're going to toll, then you can't turn it on in one city in one region first. You have to do a comprehensive approach because it's kind of un, unfair to turn it on in one, one little part of the freeway first, impacts our residents, and then not toll anywhere else for years. Mayor, thank you very much for uh, joining us on Ion Northwest Politics. Uh, we do have to go, but I want to congratulate you on the Westland High School basketball team, which was recently ranked number one in the country. Uh, and they're still ranked number one in the state. So, uh, Mayor Rory Bialystowski, thank you for joining us on Ion Northwest Politics. Thank you, and that's my alma mater. Go Lions!